Well, 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 good afternoon, everybody. It is Brad. And Krista. With the Big Family Homestead. Yay! And the crowd goes wild. And, you know, I do have the ability to make things explode, but I'm just not feeling explosive right now. <laughs> I'm just not. Okay, that's good. Negative 24 degrees takes some of the oomph out of your pow. I think it's almost to zero today. No. It's, yeah. No, the sun's on the, the thermometer deal. Well, I looked at yeah. the actual, whatever. Doesn't yeah. matter. Doesn't matter. So, hey, yeah, well, say hi to everybody, Mama. Hey, everybody. Uh, Nashville Cat and Waters. Stacy O. Condy, is that right? Condy? I would say it like that. Candy. Candy? Yeah, okay, you could do that. Living like Claire, she's not far from here. She's actually just upstairs. Farm Alarm, Angel Eyes, Joke. Hey. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Leah Williams, Heather at Going Batty. She's one of my favorite people. Josephine Heller, Mary Beth, Mary Beth Smith, Mom Mom is from Vegas. Well, and lots and lots of other people. <laughs> Welcome. Today, we are going to make, well, I'm going to run the computer and try to keep her I'm... on task because usually it's Brad who's ADD, but when she's cooking, really? it's like, okay, steps. You know what you're doing, but they don't. <laughs> That's <is> true. <laughs> I know. And, and she was getting I, an unleash I... on me. <laughs> Did you see that? It was like the Roman soldier. <laughs> unleash. <laughs> no, well, that's what she was getting no, ready to really. do. No, I just, I, I know how I have to do this, but me explaining it is just really hard. Sorry. And I'm really good at and reading I, manuals. I, yeah. Well, I, so like, I will they don't do my know. best. They don't know. And if I confuse any of you, please tell me to stop what I'm doing and start over. Or define things. Yes. So I'll try very, very gently to chime in as needed. You know, I mean, and occasionally you might need the occasional one of these, but you know, whatever. Boom. Here's the recipe, guys. If you're Hope you got it off the main deal. Uh, why don't we go ahead and read it? Uh, okay, so we need two cups of really warm water, uh, two thirds cup of sugar, one and a half tablespoons of yeast, one and a half teaspoons of salt, a quarter cup of any kind of oil that you like to use. And Motor oil. No. Uh, Transmission. And five to six cups of flour. And yes, there is not an exact amount of flour, and we will talk about that when we get to that part. Snake oil. Mongoose oil. <laughs> any kind you want. Okay. So, okay, then. if you're cooking along, get out your water and well, sugar, yeast, salt, oil, and flour. Yep. Now, to answer a question right off the bat, people are going to ask, what kinds of flour can you use? You can use all-purpose flour. You can use bread flour. Heck, you could even use wheat flour if you would like to, but I wouldn't recommend it today. Uh, you can experiment after you know how to make it with white flour. <laughs> Trust me. Shush. You're going to want to experiment a little bit. And for those of you who are gluten intolerant, today's not for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we, a lot of folks are uh, trying to eat gluten-free. We are not that family. Um, and know, if you want to learn about gluten-free recipes, you will have to find another channel for that. <laughs> I'm calorie intolerant. If it doesn't have enough calories, I don't want it. You know, actually, I forgot to tell you. I signed up to be on this men's retreat thing for church. Yeah. No, I knew that part. Well, and one of the... one of Because the, <laughs> there's a questionnaire online, uh -huh. right? And one of the questions was, do you have any you know, food allergy or intolerances? And I said, food without calories. <laughs> and if you, know, if you know the pastor that's in charge of this, he's going to read that and be like, glitch, glitch. <laughs> like, is he being serious? All food has calories. <laughs> So, oh, wow. I'm intolerant to food without calories. Anyway. You are ridiculous. Recipe one more time just because I interrupted you. I'll okay. shut my mouth now. Okay. Uh, two cups of really warm water. Generally, the temperature is between 105 and 110 degrees. Any, any hotter, you'll kill the yeast. Any colder, and it just won't activate it. Um, so two cups of really warm water. A two-thirds cup of sugar. You can use honey, but we're using sugar today. Uh, one and a half tablespoons of yeast, one and a half teaspoons of salt, 
a quarter cup of oil and five to six cups of flour. And for those of you guys watching the replay, I know we're live right now, but you can always go back and get the recipe off of the intro. Just hit pause. What? What's funny about the recipe? reading a comment. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, which so I, comment I, is that funny? Well, it's the the comment. That G, G, Joint Chiefs says it's a sin to gluten. <laughs> All right. Now, what we have done just before we get going is Mama has already pre-made two different stages of the bread. That way, we don't take three hours to make this video. Because that's a. It takes about two and a half hours to complete this whole. Project. From when you sit down till you're having bread. Right. So, right now, she's going to put a loaf of bread in the oven. Forget about that until later. Right. Okay? Right. But that's just because we don't have the miracle of Martha Stewart, you know, multi-camera editing and, right. and some assistant that hands you some perfectly beautiful loaf of bread and says, here, it's done. Well, this is what it looks like. We'll, sh yes. no, well, you got to keep one out. You, I, no, I don't Yeah, to show them how it's rolled. Oh, I don't know what you did. I told you I was making three batches of dough. I told the director. <laughs> so this is how high you want it to get, um, where it's just above the top of the pan. So we will talk more and about it'll, that And it'll rise more. Yes. It'll rise more. Okay. Uh, farm alarm. I really need to make bread. We go through so much. I've never tried. Okay. Now, first of all, benefits as mom is doing her thing. Obviously, the health benefits. It's going to only have whatever you decide you want to put in it. Right. If you're like, hey, I want fiberglass bread today, I would really recommend against that. It does not taste like cotton candy. Trust me on that. But <laughs> let's just say nothing. I'm glitching again. My innards didn't look right for a week. Anyway, um, you're going to have whatever it is that you want to put in it. You're not going to have mystery ingredients like MSG or whatever. Right. So... You can stick with the standards, you know, but also too that you know it's gonna it's gonna save you a lot of money. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, each loaf will cost us about uh, twenty five thirty cents. Um, where if you go and buy the cheapest white bread you can, it's a dollar. What? You, yeah, but not even that. Like the white bread that she's making would be the stuff you get in the deli bakery, right? And you're gonna spend two fifty a loaf for these easily. Exactly. Exactly. So thirty cents, two fifty. Right. If you feel like two fifty is better, call me. We've got some things we'd like to sell you. You know, just cheap things. <laughs> anyway. Oh wow, he's in rare form today. Ah. <laughs> Yay! Papa's got a brand oh, new goodness. bag, six inch ribbon curls. Okay, squirrel. Sorry, Where just went back to elf. Squirrel? Elf movie. Yeah, I know. Six inches. I know. Code name, Papa, because I got a brand new bag. Okay, so we're going to start, or you're going to start by showing them the process of the first initial, we'll call it the doughing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay then, um, so what we need to do is we need to get our really warm water. Um, I always just turn on the tap to the hottest it can go, because that's about 105 to 110 degrees, and I can tolerate a lot hotter, but... Um, Usually... She just hands me the glass of water and I hold it for five seconds, and then it's it's cool to the right to the right temperature. The the uh, the proper heated temperature gives me ice cubes in a glass. Was that another? Okay, here's the thing: when you live up north, where we live up north, oh we when it gets really cold out, the frame in your house, the the beams will actually start to pop. And sometimes it'll push nails out or push things around. It's and we didn't know because this is the first time it's been this cold this long. Yeah. Since we've been here and it was like, bam! <laughs> like, Scared what is the that? stew out of me this morning. I was getting my clothes in this morning and all this, the wall on the other side of our bed just popped. What the heck? It sounded like somebody took a bat to the side of the house. Yes, that's exactly what it sounds like. Scared the... Yeah. The, the bejeebers. The, yes, that, that All right, works. continue okay. so you get your hot water. So, hot water, and I can touch it. I mean, I can tolerate a lot hotter, but I'm not boiling water, but it is it is quite hot. Go can't ahead and this. pour this into your bowl, because if it's too hot, if it's too hot, it will kill your yeast. If it's too cold, it won't activate your yeast. Or it'll take a really long time. Yeah, right. 
So now we're going to take our sugar. Which is? Okay, two thirds cup mm -hmm. of just plain old white sugar. You can use honey, but um, this recipe has always called for sugar. And the reason, it's not a very healthy recipe. Not at all. We got that. Check. Got that. We know. Right. You can we know save the comments. We know it's not healthy. Yeah, it's, trust me. You can make it with honey, but it just is better with the sugar. So you can do it. You can do it I honey. have I have done it. I have altered this recipe to where it is more of a savory bread. And I, and it, Okay, the sound's back. Uh, here's the thing. I just oh, saw no. a while. We are experimenting with different cameras, and I apologize. Let's go ahead and reiterate what you said. Okay. Because when we when we cut to a different camera, the audio the audio's off. off. Okay. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna Sorry, have to quick folks. and do something fast. But go ahead and tell okay. about the dissolving. So what I did was I put the sugar in this hot water in the warm water, and I dissolved it with the end of the spoon. I have found that using this side of the spoon is so much easier to stir the bread and combine the the ingredients than with this side. Mm -hmm. It it just makes it really really easy. So. Now I've got our sugar dissolved into um, our uh, hot water, water. Mm -hmm. and I've got, I need one and a half tablespoons of yeast, and this is just the Red Star uh, yeast. It's the instant, not the instant, but the um, dry active yeast. Mm -hmm. and, and we've I, said this last okay. week, but if you keep mm -hmm. it in your freezer, That's it lasts right. a long time. Right, right, right. So yeah, it, this will last us about six months. This big, it was a two pound block of um, uh, vacuum sealed yeast. And I get it from Sam's or from GFS. Uh, they're like $4, dollars $4, $4.50, $4 somewhere around there. Now, if I go to the close camera, it's gonna shut the audio off, guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly try to add another microphone. So there's gonna be a lapse in audio for just a second so that you can hopefully get the close-ups. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. So warning, here it comes on your mark set. There we go. Now it's working, but we just gotta turn it down a little bit. Yeah. Check, 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 check. There we go. Sorry okay. about that, guys. Now, now you can see the close-ups yes. with actually You can see sound. the yeast actually starting to activate. We'll let this sit for just a minute and watch it and just watch it come up and bubble so we can answer any questions you guys might have um, on the steps so far. Yeah, so. so what you're actually yeah. waiting for is a process called proofing. Right, right. Well, that's, yeah. Well, we just want to make, we want to prove that this yeast is actually going to work in our bread. Um, and so you let this sit in the warm water and the sugar and it just starts to eat that sugar and just starts to get all happy and, and releases that carbon dioxide and that's where all the bubbles are. I got a from. question for you. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had bad yeast? Because I've never had bad yeast that we get out of the, the packages. Not out of these packages. Um, I have had bad yeast in those little tiny individual packages. Hmm. Because they're on the shelf forever. Well, yeah, and they're not in a refrigerated area. Right. Not that you have to. Right. You don't have to. It just no. really extends that life. Right. I have I have found this, getting it this way in these big two-pound blocks is way cheaper mm -hmm. than buying it in the glass jars, the Fleshman's yeast, or those little tiny packages. Those, I mean, the, the tiny jar, I think, was like $7 or $8 the last time I bought it, which was, what, 10 years ago? <laughs> yeah, and, and so. where we used to live, I don't know if they sell it at Aldi, but where we used to live, you get the big bricks at a restaurant supply company called GFS, yes. Gordon Food Supply, mm -hmm. 
and it was cheap. Mm -hmm. We would go buy the 50 pound bags of flour mm -hmm. and the big things of salt and the big sugar. things of oil and the big things of sugar. Yep. And that's how you get your, your loaves of bread down to 25 cents a loaf, guys. Right. right. You know, if, if you're having to buy it off the store, it's still going to be cheap if you're just going to your Walmart or your Publix mm -hmm. or whatever it is you have. Right. But if you can, if you're, if you're going to make the commitment, you know, I'm going to make bread at least a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense to go to a, a restaurant supply store. Well, and you can buy the bigger bags in bulk at, at Walmart or Sam's or Costco, wherever, um, if you don't have a GFS nearby or a restaurant supply service. Um, you know, you can get those bigger bags, and it'll still save you a lot of money. Yeah. So um, I know there was one question that said, what kind of flour can you use? You can use all-purpose. You can use bread flour. I generally... Uh, tend to lean more towards bread flour. It just makes a nicer loaf of bread. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the closed camera. People are saying it's, it's too, too quiet. Yeah. I'll turn it up. One, two, three. There we go. All right, that should be about the same. Now, um, are we are we proof? Are we proof yeah, positive? Yeah, you see all of the... Are you on the close? Yep. If you can see all the bubbles starting, bubbles. This, this yeast is, is good. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and, and you, generally... When I make the bread, I never wait for this because I know my yeast is, is going to work just fine every time. But if you're new at making bread, please make sure you wait for that. Now what you adding? Now I'm going to add a quarter cup of oil. And you can, again, use whatever kind of oil you want. If you only have butter, if you have grapeseed oil, olive oil, it does not matter as long as there is an oil. Um, I'm using vegetable oil because right now it's not a healthy bread anyway. So, <laughs> and it has kind of a neutral flavor. It does. It does not. It doesn't have a, like olive oil has a unique flavor. Yep. Vegetable <laughs> oil does not. Well, so. and if we had more money, I would dare say we would try a lot more with grapeseed. I usually, when I'm making you know a healthier bread, I usually use grapeseed oil. It's really, really nice. It's mm -hmm. super light. The smoke point on grapeseed oil is super high. It's just very expensive. I mean, it's going to cost you. A lot more for something that's this size than yeah. even an olive oil that's right. okay. Right. We get these at Aldi, and I think they're like two fifty, three dollars. But that doesn't these. take a whole lot to use that, no. that bottle. No, we there. go through one of these pretty quick because we use it for pretty much everything. Okay, so now <clears throat> I've got the water, the salt. No, I've no got the water, yet. the sugar, the yeast, and the oil in here. And I'm going to go ahead and add flour before I add the salt. And now your base that you're you're targeting, because it can be a little bit more or a little bit less on the yeast, but what's the recipe say is your target? The yeast or the no, flour? No, flour, sorry. Flour, five to six cups of flour. Now, when, you are, when you're baking bread and it's rainy outside and it's very humid, mm -hmm. you're going to need more flour. Because the air is wet, it's going to take more to make this dough sit right. When it's dry like it is today, it's very dry in you know outside. It's winter time and the heat is running. You're gonna use less flour. So. All right. Well, uh, so you added in. I only I'm gonna only add in four cups initially. Okay, you do that, and I'm gonna answer a question. Okay. Jeannie's asking about avocado oil. You could do that. That would be very expensive. Yes, it But it would be, be really, probably a very unique taste. It would be very good for you. And Sandra yeah. Weirich is saying, I saw an older vlog where they were having to sell their animals or were going to move. What happened there? That was a year and a half ago, Sandra. Yes, which is great. And ago. we're so glad that you've mm -hmm. come along for the ride. Yeah. We are now in Wisconsin. Things are established. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on. You've got a lot of videos to catch up on, sister. Yes, you do. Probably about 300 <laughs> or yeah, more. Yeah, we have. We do a video generally, a video every day. Um, so to recap, got a lot. quick. Yeah, we've got our animals. We've gotten our barn established, and all of our everything is. However, good. this place is not our place. Not yet. We're lease purchasing, and mm -hmm. we're hoping. That we can go ahead and, and become owners of this place soon. Because yes. we really don't want to have to move again. And I don't think the people that own this want to reacquire it. Nope. So, anyway. Um, uh, da -da -da -da, here we go. Zane says he can't wait to try it. I cannot wait for you to try it, Zane. Thank yeah. you. Uh, uh, movie review guy. Yes, you can use coconut oil. I yep. have done that many times. Um, it, it is another... Um, if you use the unrefined coconut oil, it doesn't have that coconut flavor. Yeah. And it's 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 also like the grapeseed oil, and that it's a very light. It's mm -hmm. got a. It doesn't take on 
um, a bold flavor. It's just right. kind of neutral. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Okay, so now I've got four cups of flour in here, and before I mix this, I'm going to go ahead and put one and a half teaspoons of salt. Um, this is a tablespoon, which is three teaspoons in the equivalency, so I do half a teaspoon, half a tablespoon. Now, for those of you who are going, oh my gosh, yeast and the salt, this is the correct time to put it in. It's not like our recipe last week where everybody's freaking out thinking it's going to kill the yeast. Right. This no, is the right time to do it. Here, I'll go to the close cam so before okay. you can see. Okay. There so you go. So here's our, our pink salt. We use the Himalayan pink salt. We really like that. And then our four cups of flour. And you can see our yeast is all really nice and bubbly here. So I'm going to take the end of my spoon because I really like the way it, it stirs the dough. And I'm just going to just mix this until it's well combined. As you're stirring, yes. Fianna Dykstra is saying, is it possible to date our videos? They all have a date on them. Every yes. every video has a date on them. I don't even have to do that. That comes from YouTube. You just got to look at the date that's in the video. Right. Um, if you go to like our video section, you can, it should show newest to oldest. Yep. You can always reverse that and do oldest to newest. Yep. But trust me, you might not want to do that because it's there's like 1,600 videos. We've been doing this straight up for four years now. Yeah. And uh, it was a funny thing as you're stirring, as yes. you're mixing. Um, basically, it was Christmas. Christmas Day four years ago mm -hmm. and four years in a month. Yes. And I honestly was just kind of, you know, the kids are playing and everybody's doing their thing and we're sitting around, there's music going, and I kind of got a little bit bored. Imagine ADD, Brad, getting bored. Very And ADD. I was like, huh, I wonder what this YouTube thing's about. And then I went and made a video. And then I made another one the next day. He was and then fun. the next day. And I was like, huh, this is kind of cool. And then you start meeting people you never thought you would meet, meet. And then all of a sudden you're talking with people on the other side of the globe. Mm -hmm. And learning about different cultures and different ways that people do things. And we were trying really hard to learn how to be homesteaders yep. when we were living on one acre and so it was like, this is the greatest thing ever mm -hmm. because we were, we were given our knowledge and getting a bunch back. Mm -hmm. And so we've made a video almost every day. I mean, now we're making about five a week, right. but that's only recent. Right. So we've got over 1600 videos. So if you want to see thinner and less gray people go back to the beginning. I'm talking about less gray. White I, man. I've got oh, the same kind of gray. Oh, oh white man. Do not start with me. Do not start with <laughs> I'm me. I'm just teasing Okay, so four cups, it's all incorporated oh, let's here. Let's go close. And you see it's very sticky. It's supposed to be. It is very sticky. Uh, no, it's not supposed to be. But we're going to go ahead and add one more cup of flour. Don't add all six cups at once because it might be way too thick and way too hard. Um, you don't want that kind of bread. H.S. Smith says, I remember watching the first video. Okay, the very first video, if I remember correctly was a goat milking stand mm -hmm. it was a goat milking mm -hmm. stand that my son david well and i built i mean he was kind of he just was like get out of the way dad and he just was doing he it he was in a school where he was learning to be a carpenter and so it was you know i was just really there to kind of hold stuff and yeah. you know let him do his thing right so anyway that was funny here i'm going to go back to the closed camera so you can see the difference in the dough because what you don't want to do is you don't want to get too much flour either. Nope, you'll get a brick. So, um, this is to the point where um, I can be done with the spoon. Look at this, not even barely sticking to the spoon. So now what I'm going to well, do... describe the tackiness of it. Well, it, it's still sticky. I mean, you can still see it sticking to my hands. Um, but it, it holds together. You can see it's not just one big even thing it's it's stick it's pulling together and it's not stuck to the walls anymore okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put some flour on this um board here Oop, here we go let's show that and not a lot just some and then we're going to dump this dough out onto the um counter when zinpa Hello from Amish country, Pennsylvania. I want to play guitar and bake bread with bread. Nice. <laughs> Whoa. Well, come on over. Yeah. Okay. Now, we're going to sprinkle a little on top, just like this. Now, the way I... I it, I've never been taught how to knead dough properly. What um, do you mean properly? 
I I've ne I'd never went to baking school. I you know, think I know you need that... to go to school to bake bread. No, you don't. No, but they're the the what I'm trying to say is the schools teach you that you can only knead bread a certain way. Well, I've been baking bread for ten years and it works pretty much every time. Yeah. White bread. Let's just say that. White bread. Well your your artisan bread rocks. Artisan bread and, and... And what else? The rolls that I make with this, the cinnamon rolls. It's like that Hawaiian sweet rolls. Right. We'll show that. Right. So what I do is I take my left hand. Now, if you're a lefty, you can reverse it. It's really up to you. I take my left hand. Wait, let me give them the close up. Okay. There you go. I take my left hand. I fold it over and I press it in. And I turn it. As you're spinning. I give it a, just a quarter of a turn as I spin. Or as I press it or turn it, I fold it, press it, turn it. Fold it, press it, turn it. I guess that's more of a, is that a quarter of a turn? I think so. Okay. Hey, Kathia from France. Hello. Oh, boy. Oh, you but wait a minute. We are in the friend. presence of royalty. BC Truck. What? what? He says if you spray down the bowl with some WD-40, it's not going to have a problem sticking. I like the way you think, my friend. No. The flavor, a little no. different. A little different. Okay, so fold. Pre tor wait, no. Turn, <laughs> fold, press. See, I have it in my mind where I just do it. I don't have to explain it. And you see the texture is getting different. And you're going to do this for four or five minutes. Or if you get tired and lazy, like I do usually, I'd be done already. <laughs> But now, what are you looking for so they can see it? You're looking for a smooth texture. That will bounce back see? when you press it. You like see? the doughboy. Pillsbury doughboy. Hee hee. Tee hee. Do you see, I press my fingers in there and it comes right back up. You want that spongy elasticity. It is like, it is like Play-Doh, Farm Alarm. Except I will Play say, Play-Doh doesn't, Play doesn't bounce back nearly nicely. Right. right. So, and you're darn near there. I am pretty much done. I would I would have finished a long time ago. Okay, I so mean, now what's next? I'm, Go back in the grease like doing, the bowl. Actually, I never grease the bowl. I thought you did. Mm -mm. I think you used to. I do occasionally, like for the um, the wheat bread I made yesterday, um, I grease the bowl. All right, Krista. Yes. Tyler Wood says. Yes. Terry says you're doing a great job. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> we had hoped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there, it's 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 done. It's I mean, you can see that it's nice, smooth texture. It's holding its shape. So Ooh, now I'm only going to do. Let me show do... that close. Sorry. That's okay. I was reading see, comments. It, it, you, it's holding its shape. It bounces back. This is pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and push, put this in the bowl. Let it rest and rise. And I'm going to put a warm, wet towel over the top of it. And why? As you're doing that. So that it doesn't dry out. I put the wetness there and the heat, the hot water on the towel so that it, um, it just doesn't dry out. It keeps it nice and moist. Erwin and Sherry. Yes, you can use a mixer. We actually have a mixer. We got a KitchenAid it's, running it's, around here somewhere. It's actually over there. Um, you can use a dough hook. That's not a problem. Yes, you can totally do that. Um, I find though, I, I get better results when I do it by hand. Shalom Mayberry says, I love kneading bread. It's very therapeutic. It, it really is. As you were saying. It really is. Um, it it just helps to work out any tension or stress that you've got going on in your day, um, especially when you're having to. Yeah. So when <laughs> she when she's getting really frustrated with me, she's like, "I'm gonna go make bread." Yeah. No. Not really. Anyway, so now you've got to put one of these. Oh, you got the other so, loaves in the oven. So the next step is you got to let it wait. You have to wait. You have to be patient. Unlike Brad here, can not. No. With white bread, you have to give it an initial rise. You need to let it double in size. Which takes generally, how long? Generally about an hour. If your room is warm, it will take less time. If it's cold, it will take longer. What I do then is I turn the oven on for two or three minutes, and then I shut it off. And then I put that bowl in there covered up with, you can use plastic. I like the wet towel. Um, and then just put that in the oven and let that rise. And it takes about 45 minutes to an hour. That's if you got a cold house. Right. If you have a cold house. If it's nice and warm and humid in your house, it won't take that long at all. All right. Doreen is asking, do you f prefer the no-knead bread over the Amish bread? They're completely different. Totally different breads. 
Yeah. Well, this the this this bread can be a sandwich bread. You can make it roll into rolls, which I will show you. Um, you can also make it into um, uh, cinnamon rolls. It's just a completely different texture. It's like your light white light white light fluffy bread that you get off the shelf, like your or those, or wonder those, bread. Or those sweet Hawaiian rolls you right, buy. Right, right. It's that kind of texture. Right. Um, but the other kind, the artisan bread, mm -hmm. it's, it? it's, it's a lot more, the, the crust is very crunchy. The inside is very chewy. It's not light like that. It's more suited for like a dipping oil kind of a thing or something you're going to spread on really great croutons or really super crispy toast. Right. Here's some that I made the other day. Um, we had um, spaghetti the other night. Oh, it's kind of coming up. Oh, here, here. I'll put it on the The kids cut camera. it. <laughs> All right. So look here. You can see the crumb of it this is... This is not the Amish bread. No, this is the artisan bread. I didn't hear if you said it. No, I just... Um, so yeah, no, this is the artisan bread and you see the crumb is very dense and thick and j it's falling apart actually because it's cold, but, um, and then the crust is usually very, um, crunchy. So that's the difference. And we'll show you the difference in the, uh, the, uh, Amish white bread because it is a very light and fluffy bread. Right. Okay. Oh yeah, people are saying they put it on their dryer or they put it on their yeah. heater. Yeah, you whatever can do that. whatever works for you. Yeah, our bathroom is generally the hottest room in the house. Or if you live great. in South Texas, it might just burst into flames. You never <laughs> or know. in Australia, I there was a comment on one of our Facebook uh, posts today that because it was about the temperature, and she said it was 106 degrees in Australia. Yoza. <laughs> when we were teaching the kids about the rotation of the earth around the sun right. and how the axis works and right. and uh, they were they didn't they couldn't wrap their heads around the fact that it was summertime. Right. Down in right. Australia. Right. That was that was quite Oh scary. wow now look at this. Okay, we gotta go to the close cam with this. Now this one, this is your next step. Because okay. What you're going to do, had you been going along with us, is you're going to let that thing rise for an hour, hour and a half, like yep. she said, depending on what you need. Then yep. this is what it's going to look this like. This is what it's going to look like. Okay? It has doubled. You, it has more than doubled, actually. Um, this And it's, you can see, it's super... Tip it a little bit. There you go. It's super poofy. I mean, look at this. Ready see, to be knocked down. It's ready to be knocked down. So I'm going to go ahead and stick some flour um, on this... Just a little bit, just so that it doesn't stick. You don't want to add a ton. And then I'm going to go ahead and dump this out on the counter here. As you're doing that, I'm going to answer Rowdy Past. Is the artisan bread kind of like a bagel? No. Mm -mm. A bagel's got a really, really tight, uh, what do you call it? Is it a crumb? The, the, the inner part? I think so. I think the that's center what's part, it's got a very tight, chewy, where this is a lot, uh, the artisan bread's a little more more bubbly in right. there. It's still chewy, mm -hmm. but not in the same way as a bagel. Right. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got our dough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and divide this in half before I knock it down. So I'm going to just guess. Because she's making two loaves, yes. which is what this recipe makes. This recipe makes two loaves. Or 24 dinner rolls, or 12 hamburger rolls, or dozens of six, cinnamon rolls. Six bread bowls for soup? Yeah, I wouldn't use this for soup. I oh, yeah, use you're this right. For you're bread right. Bowl. I'd use the artisan bread for bread, yep. artisan bread for a bread bowl. I yeah. agree. So, then I'm just going to go ahead and just get some flour on my hands and kind of sprinkle it on top. Just like fairy dust. Just like fairy dust. And then I'm just going to go ahead and knead this in just, just to knock it down a little bit, just to knock out those bubbles. And to get it into a basic shape. Right. And I'm just going to roll it just like this to where it has this nice, pretty smooth shape on top. It's ugly on the bottom, but that's okay. All of that will come out. I'm going to do it again here. Round two. And oh my gosh, the bread that's baking. Smells delightful. Smells delightful. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same process for um, knocking it down as kneading it. And then you just pull, like I said, you just pull this under. Can you show the oh, close-up one sorry about it. I was reading comments. I thought yeah. that's what you were still doing. You gotta go a little lower. There you so go. So you just tuck this in, just like this. 
there. And each of this, this recipe will make um, one and a half, two one and a half pound loaves. Mm -hmm. So these were, are one and a half pounds, approximately, give or take an ounce. I don't, I don't measure them anymore. Um, she used to be meticulous. She would cut off a little bit and a little <laughs> bit and then keep adding it to the, to the her scales. I got lazy. <laughs> I'll be honest. Okay, so now a lot of you have asked um, about the communion bread that I would make. This is, this is the step I'd be done. And then I would take my round cake pan, I'd oil it, and I'd put this in the cake pan and let it rise. Now, for those who may have been not watching this before... At church, that when they would do communion, they wanted something to be a nice visual representation that everybody could see, even though it's made with yeast and sugar and all the stuff that you would not traditionally have as communion bread. Right. It was a visual. It was a visual. So she made visual. this big looking beautiful piece of bread mm -hmm. that the communion people that would serve would fight over after church. Right. And the pastor would be up on in the front just and, and break visually break the bread. That was not what was actually served. So yeah, if you're going, wait a minute, why would you serve that for communion? No, unle unleavened bread was what was served for right. communion. Which is kind of funny that they would have you that, but whatever. Right, and uh, there's another question. Mace, Marcy is asking, do, am I using my pizza stone? No, I'm actually using two loaf pans. Um, these are the Wilton loaf pans. Just basic loaf basic pans. Basic loaf pan. Um, it's the normal, uh, like, nine and a half inch size. Um, I've made the, I've used this for meatloaf, and it's it's really nice and crusty here. It's got it's kind of well seasoned on there. Yeah. But. Okay. Uh, Diana Justice, Brad, can you freeze this dough? We have been told by other folks that you can. We've never tried it because we never ever have to not use two loaves. Right. So if you want to give it a go, let us know what you think. We've had mixed replies on whether it works. So I we don't make any guarantee on that. Now. This is the bread that she had made earlier. So mm -hmm. if you're following along, this step is coming next. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. I wanted to show you a finished product and you guys not have to wait an hour and a half. We'll just let it sit for now. I'm gonna. I yeah. just gotta take it out of the hands. Petey, okay. have you ever tried making challah for communion? Um, yes, you have made challah. I have not. The egg bread, the braided egg bread. I've never made it. Yeah, you have. Okay. Actually, a long time ago. I did? Yeah. Because I don't remember that. Yeah, I remember, it didn't look right. It was not good. That's probably why I don't remember it. I it was a long time it. ago. I blocked it from my memories. It's Yes, <laughs> I did not do that. Right. I did not do right. that. Okay. But now that she's a much better bread baker, I think you'd be great at I it. I probably should try it because I love Hala. Absolutely love it. And I remember from our time at the Messianic Synagogue, I absolutely loved it. And I get a big, huge chunk of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, uh, okay, moving on. Next step is you're going to put this in your pans. Next step, I'm going to put this in the pans, and you're going to probably want the up-close camera because this is this is a, a critical step. Aaron showed me how to do this years ago. A friend of ours. Yeah, a friend of mine from, oh, 25 okay, years Okay, we're going ago. close cam. Okay, so we have our dough, okay, and this is the beautiful, pretty side. We're going to flip it over Oof. to show the ugly side, right? Then we're going to just press it down to where it's kind of a rectangle. Don't overwork it. Just just kind of press it out. And then I'm going to turn around because this is a longer side. I'm going to take this shorter side and I'm just going to tuck it in. See how I'm just rolling it like a, a jelly roll. Jelly roll. Okay, just like that. Then you take your pan. I've greased this before. And you're just going to place it ugly inside. Ugly side down. Ugly side down. And then just give it a little press just to where it gets into all the corners there. And then you're done for now. Then that's right, going to sit you. again. Try it. I'll show you one more round time. Round two. Nice, pretty round ding, side. Ding, 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 Flip ding, ding, it over to the ugly side. This side's shorter than this side. This side seems longer. So I'm just going to go ahead and press this out. Just like that. I'm going to take the short side. I don't know how it does that. It, one side always gets longer than the other. And I'm just going to roll this in and just kind of tuck it. Just like that. Now, Joint Chiefs, as she's doing that, Oops. Joint Chiefs has a question that I don't know if we are able to answer. Maybe someone in the crowd is. Uh, it is, what about cast iron loaf pans? Do they get too hot and burn the crust? Um, I don't know. 
We've I'll never be honest, done that. I, I have I have two up there. They're slightly smaller than these pans. The thing with cast irons, I like to heat the cast iron pans up before I use them. Mm. So you can't really do that with this kind of bread because you need to let it rise for a half an hour before you bake it. Well, and the metal's got to be really thin to transfer the heat from the oven in so that it gets right. hot enough because the cast iron's going to take longer to transfer that heat. Yeah, the, the cast iron's going to take longer yep. to heat the sides. So I really don't know. I think that cast iron breads would be better for, or cast iron pans would be better for corn, cornbread loaf. Oh, yeah. Or um, I wouldn't even, maybe banana bread. Those no. kind of breads. I'd like say a very, a very, see, I don't know, because there's too much sugar content in banana oh, bread. Oh, it might burn. Yeah. I, we don't know. I don't Something know. Something to try. Yeah, I think I might try cornbread in it because you can heat that pan up first mm -hmm. and put the grease in there and then pour your cold batter in there and that will help heat it up. But you can't do that with a with this kind of pan. But there are others out there that might be able to do it. Okay. So Nashville Cat, we're not Pampered Chef people, but she's saying Pampered Chef stoneware is the best I have ever used. We've never tried the stoneware baking pans. No, we don't have the baking pans. I have a pie pan. Not a pie pan. It's it's a deep tart pan. It's like this deep mm -hmm. and about this big, big around. So I have I I have it. We found it at a yard sale and have not used it yet. We well, just about everything we've gotten from Pampered Chef, we love it. Love it. That's what our pizza yeah. stones are. Our pizza stones are from Pampered Chef. Okay, so now this step. Now you're gonna let this rise again. Half an hour. Then you're gonna when you go ahead and get these in your pans, mm -hmm. you're gonna go turn your oven on to get it preheated. Yep. If we already did that because to save time. Right. So leave these in the pans for a half an hour until the dough gets to be about the same level as the top of your pan. Then it's then it's good. Then it's high enough to bake. You can go a little bit higher, but don't go too high because trust me when I tell you because I've had it happen before. You let it rise too long. The second you go in to bake it, it's going to deflate and you're going to flatbread. And it's really... Discouraging. Endless. It's very discouraging. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If you were intended to have flatbread, perfect. But it just means that there's too many air bubbles inside your dough and it's not going to hold its shape. Yep. So this is done. This is ready to go um, over to the warm stove on top of the stove um, and rise for a half an hour. Okay. Tyler Wood says, we see no difference between our steel bread pans versus stone pans. I don't think cast iron would be different. Uh, well, we'll have to try we'll it. To try it. Yeah. But this is the completed process. Right. So like she said, we're going for the other half hour rise. Mm -hmm. Oven's heating up. Yep. Then it goes into the oven for how long? 30 minutes at 350 degrees. So, and then, so you have from start to finish, it's going to take you about... Two hours and 20 minutes, two hours and a half if, you know, if it's taking a little bit longer to get the dough, the weight, the shape you want it. Let's get um, close. Look yeah. at there. And that's what they look like. It's, it's, it's nice. really, well, give them a thump. I'll be quiet. When you thump the bottom of bread after it comes out of the oven and you hear that hollow sound, that means that the bread is done all the way through. If, it, if you don't hear that hollow sound and it's like a dead thump, then... It's not done and you need to bake it longer. So there it is, kids. What we're yeah. going to do is we'll, we'll just chat a little bit yeah. and we'll talk about, you know, bread and bread making and whatever mm -hmm. else. And we'll just see how long we go because we, right. we're only at like 40 minutes now. Oh, wow. Believe it or not. I nice. thought it was going to take a lot longer. Well, you know what I could do is I could take one of these loaves and show them how I make the cinnamon rolls. Or roll or them the out the rolls. sweet rolls. Yeah, rolls. sweet rolls. All right. So we're taking that out of the pan. All right. So this is how you, you basically have, okay, let me, let me, let me pause. All right. If you actually have, you know, people that you want to go over to their parties for dinner parties and you actually want to be there and you actually want them to like you, mm -hmm. this is the rule recipe that you bring yeah. and then you will get invited back every time, all the time. Yeah. When Krista was making this bread uh, at our church, they had a Wednesday night meal <laughs> so that basically that they, they had people that were cooking there but she was requested to make the dinner rolls and i kid you not people would wait to sign up for the meal to find out if she was making the dinner rolls before they would go yeah i want dinner right and then even the pastor the comes pastor, stealing 
He didn't sign up for dinner, but he'd smell the rolls all the way at his office. He'd come down. And he'd come down and take three or four. And so. and there were always people that were just sniffing around. This is the recipe. Mm -hmm. This Amish white bread. This is the recipe. And then just the way she's going to show you how to make these rolls, mm -hmm. this is it. This is the way that you get invited back for Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever you right. need. All right. So you're going to put this into its dough ball again. A little lower. There you go. Okay. In your dough ball, right there. Okay. Now, you're going to cut this in half. Dano, we will cut into the bread a little bit later. She's going to yeah, show how to make these rolls. I, yeah, I'm going to show you how to make these rolls. So, I cut this in half. I'm going to cut this, each piece, in half again. What I want is 12 pieces. So, each quarter, I'm going to take into thirds. And I know they're not even, and I will even them out because I know about how big I want them. You can weigh them. I don't remember how much the weight of them is. I need a little bit more flour so they don't stick to my hands. So this is about the size you want right here, okay? So it's going to fit in the palm of your hand. Not too big, not too small. Like this one is too small. So I'm going to take from one that's too big and add it to the small one. But then... You know, what, like what we did with the big piece of dough, I'm going to do the same thing with this piece. And I'm just going to make it smooth on the top, ugly on the bottom, just like that. And then I'll place it into the pan. Oh, you can't really see the pan, but that's okay. Okay, so I'll show you again. Just take that piece of dough. It's about the size of my the palm of my hand. Now I know if you have bigger hands, it's gonna be smaller, or if you have smaller hands, it'll be slightly bigger. But each batch of dough um, will make 24 dinner rolls. So if you want one loaf that's just, an, or one that's a loaf, or you want 12 rolls, or 24 rolls, or six big hamburger buns, or whatever you like. But then you're just gonna, Put them in your greased pan. I uh, I'll move them back. No, no, it's fine. It's, uh, no, it's fine. It's a little bit more toward you if you can. I know you're in your working area there. But now, see. see, what you guys don't know is I'm I'm super happy right now because what we're going to have for dinner is going to work perfectly with this. What are we having for dinner? We're going to have our, our uh, hamburger ground beef gravy. Oh, that's right. And mashed potatoes. Yeah. This is going to be perfect. It's like stick to your ribs man food. Man food. Goodness gracious. Heck yeah. All right. So, and I apologize. I'm probably going really fast. So I'll try and slow that down just a bit. But I just. You, it's just, the same thing as the big loaf. It's the it's just same smaller. thing. It's just smaller. And it's funny because I used to be able to make, I used to make so many rolls. I would make 10 dozen. Yeah. People would you know, buy them. People would buy them for parties or for, um, any kind of catering thing, I would I would make these rolls for them and for church and um, I'd have it down to where I could roll out <clears throat> a dozen rolls in about two minutes. <laughs> Roxanne, I just turned on YouTube and here you are making your Amish bread. I just made your Amish dough. Oh yay! Now I'm waiting for the oven to heat up to 350 to put in the yes. yes. All right. Love it. All right. So yeah, th it was this particular recipe. In the many ways mm -hmm. you can make it was really funny because they started asking her to do like mom and daughter bread making classes yeah. you know just a way mm -hmm. for mom and daughter to connect and yeah. and it's a practical thing once again you know what ingredients you put mm -hmm. in there it's gonna taste better than anything you could buy at the store right and it's gonna save you money exactly exactly so there 12 pull back, pull back this way there you go 12 rolls and once again, you're going to let this rise the same amount of time. You're actually the rolls you're going to need to probably let to let rise for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. They take a little bit longer to get to be the right size. Now, if you want them smaller, let them rise for a half an hour. I like we like them a little bit bigger to where they're you know about this big when they're done. There you go. About this big, um, like the the size of the Hawaiian rolls. Okay. So I, we let them get a little bit bigger. All right, now, they were asking for you to cut into that loaf. Sure. They had been waiting. Now, here's the trick. This is truly the trick. Because when you when you smell that bread baking, mm 
<laughs> you don't want to wait until it comes out of the oven, let alone when it comes out of the oven, you don't want to wait until it cools down at all. No. But, trust me, after you've had first, you know, four or five loaves, and you're like, okay, maybe I should let it cool down, you'll find that if you just let it cool down even 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it actually holds its shape a lot better, and it doesn't kind of come in on itself. Right, well, what's really funny is... Um, our oldest son, David, and Brad, they would come in and hollow it out. Well, because we knew she'd be ticked off. So what we'd do is we'd come in and grab a corner, like, and then le lean it up against the other one. So I wouldn't see so it. So she wouldn't see it. And then she'd come around and there'd be like a gaping hole underneath there on the bread. It was so frustrating. <laughs> and, and most of the time, we just would hide until she, you know, wasn't angry Cooled anymore. Cooled off. All right, so you want to show the... Well, are you on for that side? Yeah. You're showing, yeah here can. you go. You can see the clothes. That way you can see what you're doing. Oh, yeah. See how light and fluffy that is? It's not that thick crumb. Yeah. There you go, baby. I know that's your Woo! favorite side. And for whatever reason, I like the heel. Yeah, I like the heel, too. It's the best for when you got a little bit of butter. Mm -hmm. But, oh my gosh, this stuff, guys, is still a little warm. Yeah. Not not so hot it's going to burn you or anything, but... Mm. Oh, there's some steam coming off that guy. I know, it's still warm. Mm. And we took it out, what, 10, 15 months ago? Daggone. Mm -hmm. I mean, that right there is what they call in the business. <laughs> the business. Roxanne says she sets a 20-minute timer for as a warning for her husband. <laughs> hmm. That's great. Was it like in A Christmas Story with the turkey? You'll get worms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you won't get worms with this. Mm -mm. No, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. This bread is so versatile. It's it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, a little bit of close up again. Mm -hmm. Now, if you guys if you guys try this and you follow the the recipe that we have, we have we have this recipe as a standalone. Mm -hmm. And go back now that you've watched us through the whole process. Go back and watch it. And give it a shot. Yeah. Because you'll be surprised. You may knock years off of your bread making learning curve. Mm -hmm. Cause oh, yeah. She tried it for a long time and, and you know, all of a sudden it was just one day somebody went light switch, bam, just oh, worked. Yeah. No kidding. It was yeah, it, it just it it was one of those breads that was just easy to follow the instructions and it just worked. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's simple ingredients. It's not this you know, two day process on how to make this mm -hmm. bread. It's, you know, you can have fresh bread in two and a half hours. And it costs you 15, 20, between 20, 20 30 25, 30 cents, yeah. depending on what you're making. Right. Like cornbreads. Cornbreads are cheap, guys. Mm -hmm. Now, that's funny. Don't tell them. Don't what? tell them. What? About cornbread? No, I wasn't. Okay. I wasn't. That's a secret. No, we'll this tell particular later. bread, okay? This bread, this bread. You would think that this would be gone in a few days or in a day. It's actually not. My kids and my husband have gotten so used to it that it's not such a It's an not amazing, a novelty anymore. It's not a treat anymore. It's, so, it's not what we get. Right. So what ends up happening is I will wrap it up in plastic because I don't have a container to put it into. And I don't freeze it. I don't like frozen bread. I don't like the way it tastes. So I wrap it up in plastic and I put it in the pantry. It gets forgotten about. Well, that's problem with our pantry as well. Right. Our pantry is is kind of away from the kitchen a little bit and out of sight, out of mind. And I've been I've been telling you that forever. It's like if you want the kids to eat the blah no. blah blah, I know. put it where they can see. I know, it. but hold on. There's there's a funny thing to this. I will go in there, and a week and a half later, I'll find this bread. I'm like, this bread is is it's still beautiful. good. It's still good. There's no mold on it. No it's been a week and a half, and there is no mold on it. And this is fresh bread that's been homemade. You would think that it would go mold, that would go, it would mold within a few days, but it doesn't. I don't no. understand why. I wonder if it's the oil. Well, that particular pantry is not insulated to the outside of the house, so it stays about fifty degrees in there. Yeah, it stays cold in there. And you wrap things tightly. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know. I mean, it just it stays really good for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean. When you haven't made it, the loaf doesn't make it for a half hour. True. It's gone. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. I love the crust. It's nice and crispy. So anyway, guys, um, mm -hmm. I hope you like the video. You like the video? 
Oh yeah. Well, Did I go video? Like the video? All right. Any last questions uh, before actually, we head was. out? What size bread pan do you use? This bread pan is the nine and a quarter by five and a half. No, sorry, nine and a quarter. I'm reading it upside down and backwards. Nine and a quarter by five and a quarter by two and three three quarters. So it's nine and a quarter, five and a quarter, two and three quarters high. So it's just your normal bread size or, you know, loaf size. It's not the little ones. I don't like the little ones. If I'm going to make a loaf of bread, I'm going to make the big one. I actually have one of the long ones from King Arthur Flour that I can't find. It's I think it's in the basement in a box still, and I can't find it. You may have used it to make soap. No, it was, it was, it's aluminum. I wouldn't have done that. Just put soap in it. No. <laughs> no. Did I oil the pan? Yes. Can I refrigerate half as I only have one pan? Marcy, um, we, yeah. you can. Yeah. Um, just make sure that when you account for the time and temperature in the refrigerator that you give it enough time mm -hmm. to warm up and, right. and rise to the right level. Exactly. Just put it in a Ziploc bag. You know, and, and you can take it back out um, or you leave it in a bowl. It doesn't matter. Um, but, yeah, take it out and leave, let it sit out so that it gets to room temperature. All right. Bread Angel. <laughs> Bread Angel. All right, yeah. you guys. So next week we'll, we'll, we'll talk. You know, we do a live show on Sunday nights, mm -hmm. 7 o'clock Central. Yep. And that's when we announce what we're going to be either cooking or baking. And uh, it might be another baking. Yeah. might be know. another baking. So... Check it out on Sunday nights, mm -hmm. and I think that's it Wait, for... One more question. One more question. Reverend Richard Lee says, did I oil the pan? Yes, I did. You can oil it with whatever you like. Um, not 10W30. No, not 10W30. Olive oil, coconut oil, veggie, veggie, veggie oil, doesn't really matter. As long as you grease it, it's fine. So. All right, guys. Yep. With that, I'm Brad. I'm Krista. You guys have an amazing day. All right.